this is reciprocating compressor operation. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the effective pumping action of a piston compressor with different pressures. So let's see if we can come up with some numbers here. Okay, 250 pounds is the head pressure. Now here we have a piston that's going to move up and down the cylinder. Suction line here, valves closed. Uh, discharge line, valves open a little bit because the piston has just come up. Okay, there is a clearance volume in here. This is a volume of gas that's, that's, that's there to mechanically protect the compressor. If I had this to where it went to zero clearance volume, when something heated up, the piston would hit the head, you know, something like that. So it would damage it. So we have to have a little bit of clearance volume. We want this as small as possible. So we, we make it as small as possible to get the most efficiency. Now let's look at what happened. The piston has started to go down. That means this volume is increasing, so the 250 pounds of pressure that was in the clearance volume is now dropping. That's 160 pounds. But it's going to have to get below 68 pounds before this valve is going to open and allow gas to come in. Once it hits 65 pounds of, of pressure in here, this valve is going to open because it's, there's 68 pounds of pressure there. Okay, the effective pumping action is starting. The space between here and here, we didn't pump anything at all. We were just re-expanding the gas. As it goes down, we are going to effectively pull gas in between here and here. Now that's a fairly big stroke, but now the piston's at bottom dead center and it's going to start going back up in order to pump gas out the discharge. Valves are closed. The cylinder pressure is 68 pounds. Now, as it goes up at 150 pounds, nothing's happening because it's got to get over the 250. Uh, we get up to 255. Piston's up a little bit farther. The discharge valve is going to open. And that's the effective stroke beginning goes up to the clearance volume just like it was before yes I know it's crummy animation I'm not very good at it we have an effective stroke of from here to here the rest of the stroke was wasted not really wasted it's just the way it works okay that's with 250 pounds of pressure and you can see from here to here is the effective pumping action. Okay. We're going to increase the head pressure to 350 pounds. And then we're going to note the effective stroke length. 350 pounds. So we still have that 350 pounds in the clearance volume. As the piston goes down, it'll get to 250 pounds, but nothing's going to happen. Remember, we got to get below 68 pounds from that 350. So it goes down. When it finally reaches 65 pounds, then the effect, effective pumping action begins. You notice this is a lot farther down that this piston went before we started getting effective pumping action. All we were doing is re-expanding the gas. Now the piston goes all the way down. We are pulling gas in. And notice the effective pumping action. It's a lot less than it was when we had a 250 pound pressure instead of this 350. Cylinder pressure is 68 pounds. The piston is going to start going up. When we hit 150 pounds, nothing's moving. We haven't reached over the 350 yet. Now, when it gets to about 355, the discharge valve is open and we will get gas pumping out. Now, the effective pumping action begins there at a much higher place than it did before. From here to here is the effective pumping action. It's a lot smaller than it was with 250 pounds. So what we're saying here is if the pressure difference between the low side and the high side is very high, 
the effective pumping action is a much shorter stroke of the piston. If it's a shorter stroke that's effective in actually pumping, the compressor is effectively getting smaller because it's not pumping as much gas as it did when we had the lower pressures. So if we had very low pressure between here, between 68, if we had, let's say, 68 pounds here and 100 pounds here, we'd have a very high pumping efficiency. But as we get those pressures farther apart, the effective size of this compressor actually reduces because of the re-expansion of the gas. I hope this makes sense. It's a simple way to understand something that happens in compressors. I can kind of relate this a little bit to, let's say, uh, let's say you had an 80 degree day and you had fairly high load in the house. The pumping action is pretty efficient. There's a pretty good amount of pumping action at 80 degrees outside. But if I increased the outside temperature to say 120 degrees, then my condensing temperature is going to go, or my condensing pressure is going to go way up, condensing uh, temperature and pressure are related. So the effective size of that compressor is reduced at the higher temperatures. And that's the way those things work. So hope this helps.